Hi guys. Hey everyone. So now let's sum up everything that we've seen in this module, right? The techniques, the action, you know, how to actually apply everything, all the principles of agroforage, how to actually apply it, what's the practical ways to do it. So the first thing, and I always say that to people because I think that's the first thing, if you already have a home garden, if you are a farmer already, you know, if you have a, if one vegetable bed, if you want to improve it, just cover the soil. That's the first thing, most importantly. Even if you're not planting trees yet, if you're not doing very complex consortiums, just cover the soil yeah. with organic matter. That's the first yeah. thing, and right? I, you know, we're walking around in the city and you look at people's gardens and you just see that uncovered soil and you can just tell that plant is crying. You know, you need to cover the soil to promote life. You know, just just go in your garden and just lift up, you know, anywhere where there's any matter, just lift it up and that's where the life is. So really, you know, this is one of the most key principles of them all. Definitely. The soil. Yeah. And, and I feel I feel like uh, you know, we've gone ahead and shown you covering the soil. I'd like to really go ahead and uh, tell you about the importance of covering the edges of the bed as well. You know, we're not just covering the top, it's covered the edges of the soil uh, of the of the beds as well, you know. And the pathways. And the pathways, the corridors. We really need to cover the whole system. You know, the importance of covering the corridor is I mean, that goes without saying because we're compacting soil there where we step in, we need to really cover the corridors so we're not compacting them, we're not causing them. You know, the roots are, be, are able to travel because yeah. otherwise you're creating islands of roots, you know, where, where the beds are and when it hits the corridor, it just hits that wall and it doesn't cross, right? And the edges really where all that water would have escaped, all that energy, let's really cover it and just retain it. Exactly, right. it's really, I, I really like to, to say that we have to consider the thing as a, a whole system right because people think you know they see a plant and they only consider the, the the very you know close part of the soil and think the plant is there but it's not the plant is all around it's really about the system it's the whole area you know the bigger the better the more you can cover the better you right? know if you've got a garden you've got your nice grass and you know but i don't want to cover it. you know people got ways around this you know you can like get little stones and paint them white and you know place them as a circle around that tree and you can cover inside where it's all nice Definitely. inside that white rock you know because in this way you've, you've kept your grass it's all neat but you've covered you know and really go to the tips of the canopy because it's, it's that that's where it's exactly. at the edges of the root that's where it's observing yeah. all, all the nutrients and maybe if you're still asking yourself you know so but what should I use to cover the soil and you know like I always like to say the best material to cover the soil is the one that you've got whatever you it's have. It's the one that you have, you know, it's organic matter, whatever it is, dry leaves, uh, horse manure mixed with uh, uh, tree shedding, dry grass, whatever it you is. Know what, you in, know what, in, really in gardens and schools where people are really worried about the, the aesthetic, I really love using grass cuttings, you know, exactly. it's so it's neat, beautiful. it's so beautiful and it's so, it's so nice to work with the veg where you can just shape it it's not it's not like a, yeah. a thick material and it's really important to, to consider that um this this type of co coverage right which we call um like a dead cover right it's it's a decaying material already right dry leaves um, dry grass or whatever it acts as as, as a um, um a, 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 it's like a, a, a thermal controller or whatever because if if the air is too cold it's going to keep the soil warmer if the air is too hot it's going to keep the soil cooler so it really acts both ways really controlling and maintaining that healthy environment for plants and microorganisms and then we jump into another thing which is green coverage which is equally important you don't only want to have um, a cover with dry grass and then have a, a weak green coverage you know plants too spaced apart you really want to have that dense green mat yeah, on the floor what you mean by green is actually planted exactly service, service plants filling up the area and really giving that covering that soil yeah. with service plants right yeah, exactly the more you have that throughout the year the more you're going to be feeding microorganisms because they are fed not only by decaying organic matter but by the 
what the roots release into the soil and directly into them. So that's really, really important. And we achieve that by companion planting. Yeah. That's the basic idea. Because, you know, when you plant lettuce, for example, you've got this spacing, but why the lettuce is really small, you've got these open spots, which we can fill up with radish. Yeah. And then you're going to have a complete and dense green coverage. Yeah, covering the layers, you know, vertical, horizontal. Exactly. You know, and still going into covering the soil. We spoke about uh, the rain and, and the structure of the soil, but if I could just be clear about it, furthermore, you know, the compacting the soil, the rain, them heavy drops, it's there every day raining and compacting that soil. So, you know, it's multiple benefits, you know, the structure and compacting. Exactly. You know, and, and like uh, my tomatoes, my tomatoes, I'm harvesting them during the rain. You know, that's because there's, there's that shredded wood there. So the tomato, you know, I've got tomatoes planted here where it's laying down on the, on the ground, you know, they've not been tied up and uh, just that's personal choice for my system. And it, had it been in contact with the soil and the rain, there was no chance of me harvesting tomatoes. Definitely. So really uh, covering the soil from the veg and we can produce in the rain many different cultures that weren't you know, people, people, the, the literature says that it's not possible. And this gives us higher prices on the market. And that's a huge difference, you know, when yeah. you can produce something that nobody else has just because we're covering the soil. Oh yeah, that's a strategy. Just because we're covering the soil. Like, I know I'm going to miss out on 30% of my tomato, but at exactly. 70%, you know, in the rain season, I'm the only double man the who's price. Got it. That's double the price. So it, it, yeah, it's really amazing. And then you don't only have tomatoes. You have tomatoes, you've got carrots because you're doing companion planting. And then after you harvest the tomatoes, you've got everything paid for. And what have you got? You've got cassava later. It's companion planting. It's succession of species and stratification of species. That's what we said. So let's optimize the use of space and let's optimize the use of time in our planting. It's all about optimization. You know, economically, you know, we've, we've put the manure down once, we've covered it once, we've, we've stretched out one irrigation. We've got three, we've got four, we've got multiple harvests, you know, and, and most of the time the first culture that we harvest pays for all the rest. Definitely, that's definitely the truth. And last thing we talk about, which was pruning, which I, I think this is, um, I would say it's the, what allows, what gives agroforestry the most versatility, because by pruning, we can change our system. If we're doing vegetables now, we can do anything else later. If we've got um, uh, tr uh, fruit production, we can go back to vegetable production. It really gives that, um, in Brazil we say gingado. It gives us a gingado. You know, we can, you can, you can, the, you can change, you can, you can, it makes the system really plastic. Versatile. Yeah, it makes the system really versatile. And it's what keeps, um, feeding the system and, and the soil with organic matter because we're always pruning. And I'm not only talking about pruning trees. Like you were telling me the other day that you were pruning tomato. You're pruning yeah. the tomato plants to produce I'm organic covered, matter. I'm covering the corridors with tomatoes, but that's just uh, you know, personal things, we, strategies from here. All right. Um, this versatility gives us so many possibilities. It really enables us the power of choice. That's why my forest is different to yours, because we're able to choose when to prune and how radical to be with the pruning and who we want to stay and who we want to go and how much sun we want to come in. And, uh, you know, so it's so many choices with the pruning. Really, let's remember the basics. If you've got lines spread out further, you've got more lights coming in, right? Uh, that means you can plant more veg without pruning so radical but then you lose uh, amount of mass that you bring it down on the floor and if you've got the lines straighter you've got more mass but you need to be more radical with the pruning if you want to keep on planting veg and do it more often and yeah and uh, also you might want to uh, have it more spaced out also if you want to cover more area uh, so if you've got many acres you, you might want to leave it 10 meters wide but then it's not s such a relation with with uh, sunlight and veg production. Exactly. And it's really important to think about pruning because I think the, the, the idea that pruning is beneficial to fruit trees, this is already well conceived. Everybody knows that. No, I, I don't think anybody doubts that, mm -hmm. right? 
but for wood trees. Because what happens is that when you prune wood trees, like we do, you know, taking the top off, it really makes the, the wood completely homogenous, right? So you don't have a, a, a thicker base and a thinner top. You, the wood comes like a cylinder. It's a perfect cylinder and it's got it gets harder and it increases the density so it's mm -hmm. really good for yeah, the really products that, that we, we yep. give and and then apart from producing organic matter which is going to feed microorganisms there's all the information that we talked about so much you know how trees oh, yeah. they really they are talking underground right they're all interconnected by mycorrhiza right by fungi and they're exchanging information all the time so when a tree which is usually a dominant tree is pruned and it's gonna um, direct all the energy to re-sprouting it sends out all this energy of growth right? all the, the information of growth to all the plants that are um, around it so we this is really clear to see mm -hmm. the boom of growth when you manage the system it's really amazing yeah if, you know if you're gonna plant something new prune it because everyone's in the right stage exactly. everyone is in, in the sprouting and that's, that's, really that's cool. definitely true and the, the the interesting thing that we have been seeing happen is because you know a lot of people in the beginning they they thought that you know agroforestry is just for small gardens you know for for for, for small plots for, for the small scale grower but we have been seeing that that's not actually the case because people thought you know it's a lot of work you know we have to be pruning all the time there are too many plants grown together but you can always design system which are a bit simpler and you can mechanize them people are coming up with all sorts of creative solutions for adapting implements and tractors to work in agroforestry systems right yeah, and this is really key because i mean we want to save the world we want to feed our children and people you know they've been talking about agroforestry you can't do it in large scale but that's not true you know in the past years we've been developing in other farms with other professors and other keen people investors and you know a lot of machinery was developed to manage your agroforestry in large scale so people are doing this you know you, you know there's that classic machine that, that was launched a couple of years ago where the platform is raised and you're at the top of the eucalyptus now the mini tractor you know this platform is attached to this mini tractor you're at the top there and you've got a funnel at the top these guys you know, they've got the chainsaws and they're taking the caps off the eucalyptus and this is falling into the funnel. It's getting shredded and falling onto, so it's all automatic. It's like the shredding is already going to, to the tree bed. So people are mechanizing it. They're being creative about it. You know, all, all, the, all the tractors coming in and cutting the grass from the, from the corridors and throwing it into the tree beds and just tractors. And so, yeah. And one, one adaptation that I find it really marvelous, um, it's, you know, managing banana trees with the chainsaw which is a very simple adaptation that you do in the chainsaw you just have to take out the, the the cap that covers you know the the i don't know how you call that in english but the, the the part where the chain goes and you just take that out and you have to do this little adaptation that doesn't let the fiber of the banana trees stick to the to, to the saw and you know it just makes the work a lot faster and even conventional people you know banana growers they don't do that and they could you know, it's just, it, it's opti that's optimization of resources. You know, so that's yeah. the idea. You, do more with less. That's it. Do more with less. And let's be creative, you know. I mean, you can create your machinery for your crops, you know. You know, if you're going into large scale, you know, you've got an investment. And it's really going to pay off the agroforestry system in your large scale. You're really going to have multiple harvest on that. And uh, maybe, you know, you develop a little machinery there to, you know, we'll give you a hand as well. We can yeah. talk about it, right? Creativity, your creativity is really your limit. Because it really is a very new technology, we're developing it. We've got uh, case studies where people, you know, have had great success. People, are, you know, I've seen things, ag large-scale agroforestry systems in Sao Paulo, and I've seen it in the market here in Brasilia. I've walked into the market and I've seen the product there, you know, all the, all the organic juice from the agroforestry from, from farms far yeah, away. So they've yeah. really got it large-scale. I mean, it's, it's not just selling locally. So, so uh, that's really exactly. exciting. And, you know, definitely, definitely. I'm really happy to see that. Yeah. So I think that's it. I, sh I hope that um, these techniques that we showed you can already give a nice boost to your gardening. I know you're going to be doing it tomorrow, right? Um, and we're waiting for you in the webinar. Uh, yeah. We really hope 
you, you bring us your doubts, you know, bring us your experiences, you know, what you have to add to this conversation, because it's really a conversation, right? We're building this together. So let's do it, let's talk about it. Yeah, let's make the tribe real strong on that, you know, in the Facebook group and on the webinar. And uh, let's keep it up. All right. Great. So, from the Agroforestry Academy crew, sign out. See ya.